Within the castle's interior, it was hauntingly still. If the story told to us by the dying fury outside of the castle was true, then there should be dozens of Aizu soldiers and furies waiting to greet us inside. Why? Why is it so quiet? Didn't Nagakura say that this place was swarming with furies? Sartison's voice trailed off as he wondered to himself, and a chill ran down my spine, then a startling surprise. A sliding door was flung open. From behind the sliding door came... <laughs> A gang of feral furious screeched to signal their arrival, and they leapt feverishly into the room. <laughs> oh, that was delayed. What? The response had to some change into his fury form. He unsheathed his sword, and then he weaved so out. Agilely? Agilely. Between the Furies, my eyes could barely keep up. Inside of a narrow hallway, Sartison opted to lunge instead of swinging his sword, piercing limbs to disarm his foes. For Sartison, seemed to be no labor to move through such a cramped corridor, as he had been well versed in fighting in many of Kyoto's narrow passageways. Between furies meant that the serum's enhancements were leveled. Only true swordsmanship could prevail. In the span of one breath, Sartosan had made quick work of each of the furies, killing them with grace and ease. This voice, it was. Great, he's here. Father! わざわざ我が娘をここまで連れてきてくれて感謝するよ。買いに行く手間が省けたというものだ。あんたに合わせるためにここに連れてきたわけではない。結果としてそうなるのだが、同じことではないだね。それにしても落ち水が随分体に馴染んでいるようだが。これから何度羅折だったか。一度きり、それとももう数え切れぬほど力を使ってしまったのかね。答える必要があるのか。いや、この間会った時に伝え忘れていたことがあってね。Sartasan was hesitant to answer given my father's cryptic tone, and Ethan's his eyes in anticipation of whatever Turk's father might have had up his sleeve. Well, however, it seemed father was posing his question rhetorically, and his lips curled into a grin as he continued on. Jinchiokoetachikaraumidasumono. If what my father had said was true, then every time Saito activated his fury abilities, had it meant that he was sacrificing his remaining lifespan? Saito-san's brows furrowed slightly, as if he were perplexed by this sudden revelation, but then he muttered in a composed, hushed tone. <laughs> The 
The fury outside turned to ash without leaving a single trace of his remains behind. So is that because... While your lifespan had been completely depleted, there's nothing holding your body or your matter together? And that meant inside the sun, having already drunk the water of life, will soon suffer the same fate? <笑>驚きと絶望で声すら出んか力を使うたび君の最後の日が刻一刻と迫ってくる絶望しただろう Father began cackling to himself maniacally, just as the despair began to sink in. So A familiar voice called out from behind me. That voice, it was. Heske! What are you doing here? Kijikata-san ni yuare tanda. Kokoro no kori ga aru n nara. Ima no uchi ni katazuke de koi ってさ. Okay, how many roots is this going to happen in where Heske just like comes in to save us? Like, uh, it's. Let me think. Is it three or four? God, I don't know. Three or four. But I love it every single time just because I love Kesuke. Kesuke laughed lightheartedly before shifting an angry glare over at my father. ラセツの力を使うたび寿命を削られる最後の日が刻々と迫ってくる俺たちは今日にいた頃それこそいつ死んじまってもおかしくねえ毎日送ってたんだぜ。一番の前の日なんか怖くて眠れねえ時だってあった。普通に街を歩いてるだけでもいつ不定老子に切り殺されるかわかんねえ。そんな中を生き抜いてきた俺たちが寿命を削られるくらいで絶望するわけねえだろ
I had made one of the figures out to be Kyuji Amagiri, who upon recognizing me, grimaced irritably. Beside him stood Chikaga Kazuma staring vacantly at, at us. I swear to God, if you say something about being delivered again. God, nothing can redeem Kazuma for me. I. I. Ah. Cosmos taunts were met were met with no reaction from Saito-san, who continued to glare, glare coldly at the demon. あんたに引き渡すために彼女をここに連れてきたわけではない。ほう。ではこれはいい。俺を倒し、その娘を守ると来たか。あの場で俺は最良の選択をしたと思っている。後悔はしていない。今まで俺が選んできた道は全て正しい道だ。そしてこれから俺は正しい道を歩み続ける自信がある。サイトサンスとミーラーはその正しい道だと。他人の命令でしか動けぬただの番犬のお前が何を選択したというのだ。その娘を守る。新選組の命令か。それとも今は合図だ。今まではそうだったかもしれん。だがこれからは Sato exercised control as he spoke, as if an intense azure flame was being struck fervently in his eyes. In an instant, Sato-san's hair turned white. Interesting. To Amagiri, Kazuma's victory may have seemed like a foregone conclusion, so Amagiri put up a little resistance and scoffed as he leaned his back against the wall. Yukimura, you are still there. Saito-san. I had to believe in Saito. I had to. So I did as he requested and I rested my back tensely against the wall. Then Saito unsheathed his sword. Their battle had begun. Saito kicked to the ground, hoping to land a critical blow upon Cosmo's exposed neck. Kazuma effortlessly smacked at Saito-san's blade to parry the strike, and the two swords were fiercely locked. However, 
Scientist on the scene was the stronger of the two. The blade trembled in Cosmo's hands, and he persisted by hoping to push Scientist on back. But then, however, Scientist on had released the tension and the two stepped back. Cosmo and Scientist on stood at odds with one another. To Cosmo's surprise, Scientist on unsheathed the second sword and lunged at him from his side profile. Cosmo raised his sword to deflect the blow, as Sarkasan edged him in speed by a fraction of a second. Every moment mattered as Saito aimed a precise strike to knock Cosmo's sword from out of his hand. He pissed. Cosmo shrieked wildly in disbelief, and he scurried a little distance over to where his sword had fallen. Then... Saito-san stabbed the tip of his blade into Cosmo's hand as it reached frantically for the sword's hilt, and I heard an eerie crunch as saito -san dug the tip deeper into the flesh. Drops of crimson blood stain the castle floor. Thick streams begin to trickle in the shape of a web. Cosmo's face scrunched as he grabbed a hold of Saito's blade and it pulled it recklessly from his maimed hand. Because of his regenerative powers, Cosmo's hand was sure to heal any moment now, but... Hatred seethed with behind Cosmo's lucid eyes, his composure wa waning slight steadily as he barked at sight of ugh, words sprain. I flinched when Kazuma began screaming at the top of his lungs. It was fear incarnate. Then Kazuma began to transform into a true demon with golden eyes and stark white hair. It was deity like and an unimaginable sight. All of a sudden, Kazuma's composure was restored, and when he spoke, his voice echoed like a temple bell, resonating in a low tone felt deeply in my chest. Sartasan assumed an offensive stance and then leapt from the ground to rush at Kazuma. But something confounding had happened. <laughs> Kazuma, who only moments beforehand was standing right in front of Sartasan, vanished without a trace. Or did he? Rather, Kazuma had achieved superhuman speed, with acceler which accelerated his movements beyond what my eyes were able to follow. I shudder to think what Cosmo was capable of if he were to shift his focus from dodging to attacking. Just as I had been contemplating the worst, a blinding flash cut through the air. As my vision was restored, my fears had been realized. <coughs> Blood spurted from a fresh wound in Saito-san's chest. Saito! I had no time to react to let alone see what happened. I hadn't seen where the source of his wound came from, but then all of a sudden another bloody gash appeared on Sarta's arms. Arm. Thick, Thick deluges of blood trickled from Saito-san's exposed flesh, gathering into a pool underneath his drenched body. <coughs> Saito-san began to cough violent, bloody violently from his mouth. Be 
Eh? Saito-san began to cough blood violently from his mouth. Although his fury powers would have normally healed these lacerations shortly after they had been inflicted. Kazuma was ruthless. He swung again and again from the shadows, giving Saito no chance to defend himself. ハハハハ <laughs> Even with his enhanced strength and speed, Saito proved to be little match against Kazuma's current state. The Grand Hall, once immaculate and lavish, had now been covered by gruesome splatterings of Saito-san's blood. <laughs> It was a traumatizing sight, and I couldn't help but cover my eyes in horror. Saito-san's leg wobbled, on, wobbled underneath him as he struggled to endure the grueling pain. It was a pain that I could not begin to fathom. <coughs> Saito-san coughed violently once more. In an attempt to support his body, which was under the verge of collapse, he stuck his sword into the ground. Kazuma walked behind Saito-san and grabbed him by his blood-soaked hair, forcing him to look up. Kazuma Saito-san drew haggard breaths, but his eyes were fixed right on Cosmo's seething glare. Oh, how forgiving are you?俺の目の前に土下座して畳に額をこすりつけ先ほどの比例を浴びてもらおうかどうした聞こえんぞ An unexpected answer to Kazuma, whose eyes twitched in response. And then, Kazuma began viciously beating Saito-san's head into the bloodstained floor, viciously like a tama drum. Then Cosmo stomped his foot upon the head of Saito-san as he wailed bitterly. Stop! I couldn't stop my body from shaking as I witnessed Cosmo brutally attacking Saito. Stop! Refusing to watch any longer, I reached my hand for my Kodachi when... Amagiri brushed off his shoulder and quietly approached Cosmo before throwing a fist at him. 
I'm gonna get it here is all about fucking respect. Amagiri then looked over at Saito-san, who was lying in a shadow pool of his own blood. Saito! Sato Sun squirmed for a brief moment, then he slowly tried raising himself up. An ominous shadow sighed, sighted closely behind Amagiri. Sid, Sidlid? Sidlid? Sided? Kazuma snuck up on Amagiri and struck him from behind, causing Amagiri to kneel over the floor in pain. You were horrible! Wasn't Amagiri one of his friends? Cosma had no visible reaction to my outburst. His aura had changed from earlier. All of the indignance from earlier had, dis had dissipated, and he fell silent. Cosmo's appearance became ghastly. Then, all of it was flipped on its head. The glow of his golden demonic eyes shine above Saito-san, who had mustered enough strength to stand. Saito! I bit into my lip and I stepped back as I was told. I wanted nothing more than to fight alongside him. But I had to accept the truth that doing so would only serve as a burden to him. So I was in a bit of a conundrum. Kazuma and Saito-san glared at one another, and the air around us was thick with an electrifying tension. For Saito-san, timing was everything. All it took was one crucial swing and victory was his. My knees shook as the tension reached its peak. Kazuma, assuming his battle-ready stance, had broken from his stoic gaze into a malicious smirk, and then... <coughs> the wind pushed back my hair from the force of Kazuma's swing, which Saito had thankfully dodged. However... Cosma had anticipated Saito evading his strike, and the demon spun his body around and swung his blade with all of his might at Saito. Saito! <laughs> Saito had been flung against the wall, kicking up a cloud of dust as he landed. A coughing fit followed soon after, but Saito raised himself back up like it was nothing. Cosma, however, gave Saito-san no chance to gather himself. Kicking at the ground for to lunge for Saito-san. 